All right, guys, I got the shop all cleaned out, rearranged, and looking good. I figured this would be a good opportunity to give you guys a shop tour. All right, guys, I built this shop back in 2005, before I was married, before I was in business, before I had kids, before I had gray hair. But, uh, it has served me well. And one of the best decisions I ever made when I built this shop is the way I went about building it. Now back in the day, everybody swore up and down this was a pole barn because it had metal all the way around it. Actually, I think I got a few pictures. Let me show you. Let me show you what it looked like back in the beginning stages. Okay guys, here's where I'm going with this conversation. I don't want to get too, too far off track or take you guys too far down memory lane, but one thing, uh, when this building was first built, it was all covered in metal. It's changed a lot over the years. It was built in 2005, and everybody always assumed it was a pole barn, and it's not a pole barn. And I'm pretty passionate and have a few opinions about pole barn houses and shops. Pole barns definitely have their place, but I don't think this is one of them. I just want to share my thoughts with you guys about what, I've, what you need to consider if you're building a pole barn to use as a house or a shop, and why I went the way I did. So... First off, uh, September 2004 is when we actually broke ground on this. I did almost all the work with an old uh, D69U dozer uh, that my dad had. It took me about two or three months to do all the groundwork. And let's see if I can flip forward here a little bit to check that out. Dug all the footers with an old Arps Kelly backhoe. Let me tell you, the old D69U and the old three-point hitch backhoe. It sure makes you appreciate the modern equipment I got today. I don't even have that modern equipment. Um, so here's what we did. We dug with footers. I actually laid block. I got a footer and block foundation on this whole entire thing. I had a lot of good friends help me back in the day. Uh, there's the whole entire setup there. The house actually had a crawl space underneath it. That's what that is there. And then what I did, uh, a few pictures of pouring the floor. That's one thing I wish I would have done a little bit different. I don't regret it totally, but I got uh, wire matting instead of rebar in there. Uh, it is eight inches thick and it does have floor heat in it. I haven't had no major issues, but uh, knowing what I know today about concrete, I would have put some rebar in it. Check that out. Got old Jenna to work. She's out there digging the electric trench in all by herself. See, she can't operate. She just chooses not to nowadays. But here we go. I framed all my walls on 16 foot tall, two foot center, two by sixes. I do not regret this decision at all. One, it's actually sitting on a true foundation. So whenever I go to finance or do anything like that, that's come in very helpful a few times. If you guys ever see a pole barn, that bottom piece of metal down there at the bottom, it's always damaged from stuff sliding into it, hitting it inside and out. I don't care. If you spill something in the shop, it runs out. You can't control your spills. Uh, it's a splash guard. It's a protection. You can, it's just that course and a half a block I got sticking up inside has proven to be worth its weight time and time and time and time again. The other thing about a pole barn, I want you guys to remember is, if you're going to finish it as a shop, or if you're going to finish it as a house, the first thing everybody always ends up doing is going back and building walls between all the poles. If you're gonna build walls between the poles, why don't you just build walls and leave the poles out and be done? Now you can still build a conventional house like what I did and covered in metal and have a metal building, but it's not a true pole barn. There's no if you, the cost of building a pole barn is always extremely cheaper. And if you're building a barn, it's the way to go. If you're gonna finish it, by the time you do it correctly with insulation and wiring and plumbing and OSB or metal or whatever you do, nine times out of 10, it ends up being the same price in the end of the long run. You still got a pole barn, not an actual building with a foundation underneath it. Uh, I would just think all those thoughts through. I got studs here. I can go through and hang anything I want. I can run wires through the wall. I can insulate. I can. I got all kinds of options. If it's a pole barn, I got a pole every 8, 10, 12 feet, however they build it, and you get really limited to what you're going to do unless you're going to come back and build a wall in between it. But that's just my thought. There's just a couple of uh, quick pictures. As you can see from these pictures, the building that I built back in the day uh, looks completely different than... The building I have here today, I'm not going to bore you with all this stuff. Look, there's Jenna up there working again. We haven't aged a bit, have we? I haven't aged one bit. So there's an old 310 backhoe I borrowed to, uh, then borrow. There is a little bit of what it looked like before I had the gable in the metal. But, uh, yeah. There it is up on the hill. See? Yep, we're still in the same place. 
There's the metal going on there. We end up, there's the two by six walls. We just put purlins across it. Uh, what I've come back now, yeah, Jenna didn't like the barns. We end up coming in and add windows in there. What I've ended up doing since, since we've added onto the house uh, from the original, is I basically took all the purlins off. I sheeted the outside with OSB, and now we have siding on the house where it looks like an actual house and it's actually finished. So that's just my quick little spiel about pole barns versus conventional barns as you can see down here you can still see the footer out there on the edge obviously the third garage door is gone because we've done some remodeling since but uh, enough about the actual structure let me just get into the actual garage tour this garage is from here to there is 44 feet from there to there is 40. the actual garage is 44 by 40 inside dimensions everybody the first thing they always say when they come here is wow this thing's a lot smaller than what I thought it was. The whole garage, I guess I should point out that from the floor to the ceiling is uh, like 18 foot two or 18 foot three. I'd have to remeasure that to make sure, but it's somewhere around 18 feet between the block and the plates and yada, yada, yada. So it's uh, somewhere close to 18 feet. The whole shop was designed around the overhead crane. I wanted an overhead crane to be able to reach this whole entire area um that was it was sized based on the overhead crane and it was sized based on the size of equipment i anticipated having in the future is it uh do i regret the size i haven't regretted the size one bit if i start running out of room it's time i need a clean house and rearrange i've been in here for 15 years now 16 or 14 years actually using it and i've not regretted the size one bit it's uh, it's worked out great the, like I said, the whole shop was designed around the overhead crane as far as the size, and I'll get to the overhead crane in, in, in the end here um, of how I went about building it, but that was kind of the premise of where the size and dimensions uh, and a few other factors come in. We're going to start here. We're going to work our way around. So this is the racing corner. Uh, racing don't pay the bills. The racing is just a hobby. So the floor space it's allowed to take up is very limited. That's why you see stuff on hanging on the walls. That's why you see stuff up there on top. This is the actual go-kart I use. He gets to take up a little bit of floor space, but that's about all the space he's allowed. And I've threatened to move him out a few times, but he's still in here for now. So that's the racing corner. This is an old upright. It's a 12 foot upright, um, 12 volt lift. I bought that in an auction for like 250 bucks. Uh, the battery charger's out of it right now. I usually just use a jump pack to move it, but it comes in really handy all the way up. That thing, I can reach all the light bulbs. Uh, I can reach the crane. I can reach the furnace filter up there. I can reach whatever I want. It comes in really handy for maintenance here in the shop whenever we were building houses. I did take it to a few jobs, but I mostly just got it for in here in the shop, uh, working on dump trucks, taller equipment. We've even had it out for that to uh, work around it. So 250 bucks, no more than I use it. It, it's 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 worth it's it's worth its value to keep its floor space this is where i store all of my welding tanks at i uh, just rearranged the shop and i need to i'm going to put a strap on there to where they're all strapped off i'm just making sure that's where i want to keep them at so uh that's on the list of stuff to do here pretty soon this here is not actually mine as a guy used to work for me Brought that up here while we were painting a truck. It's just kind of hung around. I expect it to disappear one day, but I'm gonna keep using it while it's here. It's pretty handy. We actually use it quite a bit. Uh, it's, uh, it rolls around. Uh, it's a little more handy than the lift because it's easier to get out. You don't have to worry about batteries and stuff. So yeah, we definitely use it. These are just some old welding jackets and stuff. Uh, honestly, most of those don't fit me, but they come in good for like fire blankets or if you need to protect a windshield or if you got something you don't want to throw sparks on, we'll grab those and, and throw them on throw them on whatever uh, i got three fire uh, fire extinguishers in the shop i know this isn't ideal you can't get that one out but uh it is charged it is good there is a first aid kit in there uh, i got two first aid kits in the shop that's one of them there that's the miller big welder uh, you guys see me uh rebuild from wade that's where its new home is going to be until we need it i am going to step back and show you guys here there is a movie screen here and i can't remember the exact size of it I think it's 20 feet by 12 feet, uh, back before we had kids and a business and a crazy life. That little bitty green box up there in the ceiling used to have a projector. I'd hit a button, it'd come down. We used to have Daytona 500 uh, Super Bowl parties here. Me and my brother used to play some video games on that. 
it hasn't been used in a while i would say as the kids get older uh, they're going to discover that and probably probably want to use it again but uh, it's still there everything still works we fired it up the other day and uh yeah it's just kind of a cool little cool little option cool little feature uh these shelves are original to the original build uh, they've been used for multiple different things over the years. Right now, I store some of my bigger tools. I got my uh, aluminum spool gun, I got my pot gun, I got my wood saw, metal saw, a couple mag drills, extra brake chamber. Uh, these here are just some bigger tools. This is a coolant kit. Uh, that's my torque multiplier, air conditioner, pool pit. Uh, I think that's, um, oh gosh dang it, a ball joint kit. That's a hydraulic three draw puller, tester kit, a couple spare parts from my go-kart and that's the go-kart starter there some spray foam and some lead weights that is sweet pea stuff uh aaron boom whenever he comes to work he sets it there i got these things here i picked these up at an auction a while back along with those i have intentions of putting those on my air compressor that's probably a video you guys will see one day haven't had time to do it so they just uh kind of been sitting there but uh, i'll get around that to one day it's uh, one of those projects in the list i guess you'd say down here, this is actually a hydraulic puller to pull final drives off an old D69U dozer. That old dozer I got, uh, the guy I got it from went out of business, uh, picked that up from him cheap. It's the only real way to get that off there. Um, it's really just taking up floor space, but I don't know, that dozer's sentimental to me. Um, it was my dad's and I still have big intentions of rebuilding it one day, so I just keep that stuff around. It may have to find a new home one day. Uh, this is an old 13 horse uh, Honda engine come off that old roller up there. I think the engine's still good. It just needs some carb work. Uh, I just keep it in here so it don't get moisture and stuff in it. A couple other random things. This here is just kind of a, I don't know if you can call it, let me turn the light on for you guys. No man's air in here yet. These cabinets are actually out of my mom's, actually out of the house I grew up in. Mom did a kitchen remodel. Up on top, I got some old gaskets and some nylon hose. I got DOT tape wire. This is from the fireworks days. A couple different styles of hoses. Um, sandpaper, whatever you call that stuff. Emery cloth, that's what it was. Uh, there's some more, this is some header tape. There's some more DOT tape there. Um, in these cabinets, I keep random parts and filters uh, for stuff that it's just, the stuff that I gotta keep around, but I don't use a whole lot. Uh, down below here, there's some more go-kart parts and some cleaning supplies. This is my safety cabinet here. Now this does get used quite a bit. Uh, respirators, mask, uh, all that stuff. Anything for breathing's in there. We got gloves in here. Safety glasses, clear, foamed, and tinted in here. And then all your ear protections up above. And we do have some latex gloves there. There's another fire extinguisher. That one actually got used on a job. I need to get it refilled. Uh, breaker panel, if anybody cares, everything's nicely labeled. Look at that, Elite Earthworks. He's got me plastered everywhere. This here is uh, all my manuals from uh, all the equipment I got and all my literature. Uh, I try to keep it somewhat organized. These things are gospel when you need them. So we got bookshelves here. Got what books I got, I keep on here. Uh, they've all proven to be true. I used to work at Mack Trucks, so that's where a lot of this Mack Truck stuff comes from. And then this works out for a good place to store the sandblaster and the manual tire changer I got. We just kind of tuck it away back here in the corner. This door here really don't go nowhere. I used to have an outside wood boiler to sit there. I've uh, since got rid of that. And uh, this is kind of a work in progress. That's, uh, hold on, big one day. My brother's got his RC boat out down there on the lake. You see him? Look at him go. We're getting sidetracked. Better watch out, that thing's gonna ramp up here and get us. All right, back on track here. So, turn the corner. Uh, we do have a bathroom out here. It's uh, somewhat clean for shop. Look, Miss Elite's tagged my, these YouTubers come to visit. You never know where you're gonna find a, find a sticker at. But uh, yeah, nothing fancy, works good, keeps me out of the house. It's, yeah, it serves its purpose, serves its purpose. It's heated, it's inside, and it flushes. What more can a man ask? So, this area here, like I said, I'm trying to work your way around. Um, this is this used to have pull down steps and it used to basically be storage or surplus or parts room. I added these steps in later because the pull down steps just absolutely suck. So the steps are a little bit of an afterthought, but they've actually worked out well over the years. This is all my uh, 
um, college stuff, degree and certificate of something, perfect attendance. Uh, this is from Mac, failure analysis. Um, I don't even know what all this is. Oh, that's my honors diploma, and this is my actual diploma, associate's jury. Yeah, good times college was. I met some good people there, learned a few things. This is a map of our county. This is all the ICF jobs we've done in the county. This is a map of the state and all the ICF jobs we've done in the state. It's kind of random little tidbit of information, but you come up here, this part here, I do still have some surplus uh, storage. That's a um, electronic fuel injection for 301 Ford, motor off an old air compressor. There's a fan for the Mac, kingpin locks. Totally random stuff that I've been weeding out over the years. Just haven't had time to uh, get it all out of here. But this, the main purpose of this area now, and excuse the mess, look, I still got the photo albums out from where I was showing you guys earlier, is my YouTube area now. And the computer is set up over here. Got my charging stations and all that stuff over there. And then back behind me is what you guys see a lot of times. All these old RC things. Are actually all mine from a, from a kid. This is actually Wade's and cleaned out the house to get rid of it. Um, but yeah, it's um, nothing special. There's a house we built and won a couple of awards for back in the day. Uh, nothing special. It works out good for me. It's out here in the shop. Sometimes I wish it was closed in because it's loud if somebody's working down below or if uh, it gets a little dirty up here. But for the most part, it works out really well. Uh, I'm, I'm, I see myself eventually growing into uh, an office that may close a spot out back later, but for now, it gets me by. I have no complaints by it. I think this is 8 by 16 is basically what this little um, area is up here. So, yeah, it works out well. Steps ain't horrible. They're a lot better than what we had before. Uh, I'll take it for now because it's better than nothing. So, We'll continue on around. If you guys remember a lot of my videos, this area has actually been rearranged quite a bit. I used to have my metal saw here. This is a 12-ton shot press I got that's been converted to a 20-ton shot press. Yeah, that's not safe, but uh, it works. And you just got to use some common sense, and hopefully one day I'll upgrade to a bigger one. But it's just not been on the priority list because I don't use it that much, but boy, it sure is handy when I do. 15-inch uh, drill press. This is about the base minimum drill press. It was actually Jenna's grandpa's. I bought it in an auction. It works good for what I did. It's got a little bit of sentimental value. Um, no complaints about it, really. We got a little belt sander here. We do use that quite a bit. I actually got that as a Christmas present whenever I was like 12 years old. Still got it, still use it, still works good. This is actually my grandpa's old grinder. It needs a new stone. It needs a new wire on it. Uh, but this, it actually got enough power to do something. Uh, still works good on an old brim pedestal. Like I said, it's got a little bit of sentimental value from whenever I was a kid. Remember, Grandpa used it, so yeah, I'll keep it up here. It works good. Back behind the screen here is a 27 CFM Quincy air compressor. It's got a seven horse motor on it. I actually got it for free out of the building I tore down. It was three phase. I did have to buy a single phase motor and put on it. I do not have three phase here. I've tried to get three phase. It's just not feasible, uh, but I had to put a new reed valve in it, probably between the motor and the valve got maybe 400 bucks in it. I have used it flawlessly for six or seven years. It has, uh, it has worked great for what I do. As we get to it later, the overhead crane is air. It uses a lot of air. Uh, we get two or three people here in the shop working. We use a lot of air. I has never failed to keep up. Uh, up above here, I got all of my rigging gear for the crane, uh, straps, come alongs, chains. Uh, there's also some other miscellaneous stuff. Up there's a plate, steel clamp, some um, clevises, just random rigging stuff for the crane. I use with this crane I use on the job site. It's just kind of uh, ends up being a good place to keep it all. This area here is kind of my rough working or fab work table. I keep my Hobart welder here. Uh, that's a Hobart 250. I actually bought this thing for 300 bucks, I believe, as the guy says it wasn't working. It had a mud dauber nest in it and it has served me great. It has been a great welder. Uh, we have really, really put this thing to the test multiple times and never had any issues with it. Uh, the torch I use is actually an old Victor torch. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that I kind of inherited from the old uh, oil well days. I, don't, I think I put a couple tips in it, but um, 
it's it's been a bulletproof little torch it works great if i was using a torch every day i'd probably want something different i don't have a plaz cutter uh it's something i've threatened to buy over the years and i still like to have one uh, i don't have one so right now i get by with the torch and uh, abrasive disc so on and so forth but got the vise here metal work table works good for fab and some disassembly if it's dirty and greasy and oily and stuff it's actually lower than the bench behind me so it works really well these are some old uh, basically they're hammer wrenches um there's a thing that slides on here i don't have bought those at an auction don't use them very often but they're worth keeping up there this is actually the main air control for the shop this is the main air com air pressure that i have in the shop it'll kick in at 115 it kicks off at 140 and I can turn this off and it'll shut the entire air down to the shop. And this here is kind of a safety feature I got. If that is off, the air compressor will not kick on and the crane will not move. So the whole purpose of having that air compressor back in there where it's at is they don't have a, a belt guard on it. So the kids can, cannot get to it, the pets can't get to it, it's safe. And then whenever I leave, this always gets turned off and this gets turned off. So if they wanna come out here and start pushing buttons on the crane or doing anything crazy like that, nothing happens and i can lock that if i need to so i can keep them out of there i haven't yet but the kids are getting old enough that's something i probably need to consider but i like having that option it's, it's paid off I, it's just a comfort one other thing i'll point out here real quick two thermostats i do have floor heat in the shop which is all this the floor heat the water is heated by my geothermal inside uh, the geothermal unit heats it this is just a storage tank so this thermostat controls geothermal I also have backup electric heat and air conditioning. Oh yes, air conditioning is a lifesaver in the summertime whenever you work out on a hot summer day and come back to the shop and having uh, low humidity and cool air in here makes all the difference in the world. My geothermal will keep up 90% of the time. If it gets down below 20 and gets in the teens overnight, about the third day of that, it'll start to struggle and most of that's my fault. I do not have enough loops in this floor. That's one thing I would change is making sure I have enough loops in the floor. I've only got four loops in this floor and it's just not enough to keep this pad hot and a real cold snap. So I got the electric heat, it kicks in. Um, it's not quite as efficient, but it does get the job done. Um, and then I, then I also double that as my air conditioner. So it works well. Uh, going on around the corner, File cabinet, just keep some random files, uh, nothing really important in there. Uh, it's, I've debated whether it's worth keeping around. This old sink, I actually got out of a building I tore down, it's an old three bay sink. We do have hot water out here, works good. Hand cleaner, these shelves are all my cleaning supplies. We do have surround sound in here that turned it, that worked into the projector and the TV over there. I don't get to use that a whole lot with you guys filming because every time I got the TV or radio playing in the background, I get demonification warning we can't have that so uh if we're not filming we use that we, we do use that quite a bit actually um i'm going to jump back to the air system here one thing that i've got to upgrade and it's high on my list is i did not use the proper pipe whenever i plumbed this thing i just didn't know any better i got schedule 40 uh one inch schedule 40 running to everything and i have come back in any place that it may get hit or fractured, I have come back and put flex pipe in it because I don't want to have any accidents. But uh, I don't think I'm going to get to it this winter, but I'm actually going to replumb this with proper airline pipe. I am fully aware that's not what you're supposed to use. It served me well for 15 years. I don't want to press my luck any longer. It's, it's going to get changed. But I got four air hoses, reels in the shop. Uh, they're all retractable. That's one of them there. Uh, come up top, that's some larger, that's inch and a quarter wrenches to two inch wrenches. Some duplicates, they're not, <laughs> they're not very well organized, but they're up there. Captain Cleveland hates that rack. He can't reach it, but uh, I got to maximize my space and that, and that works well up there. These are all the pumps for the floor heat water storage tank. Uh, here's the second first aid kit I keep in the shop and keep handy. Got two battery chargers here and this is my cordless section. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm all DeWalt. Whenever I was in the construction business, DeWalt's what we had. We just, we just, I keep with it. Uh, I think DeWalt makes some things exceptionally well, and I think they could improve on other things, and I think Milwaukee's the same way. Milwaukee makes some exceptional good, good stuff, and there's also some things they can improve on. I have no real complaints about DeWalt. Um, I, I've been happy with it. I, I wouldn't go say I've been 
going to be an advocate for it, but I, I've been happy with it. If for no more than I pay for it, it works good. So on the cordless, this here is a catch-all um, miscellaneous small bolts and parts, some snap rings. Uh, this is the um, some plumbing stuff or some irrigation stuff I had going on. This is a crock pot. Whenever we were in the spray foam business, we had to uh, heat the gun to bake all the uh, urethane and stuff off of it. Don't use that a whole lot no more. Uh, this is a, this is my wood workbench. Up on top here, just random stuff. Got some tape. I got a lot of my thread compounds and stuff like that. I got a few Allen wrenches stuck in there. Uh, if, I'm, if it don't have oil or grease in it, I'm probably working on it on here. This one here is a little taller than that one, so it's more comfortable for me to work. But it, it really depends on which one I'm working on uh, to which one I use. So keep all my pipe wrenches here. I don't know where my small one's at. It's out somewhere. Chainsaw sharpener. Do you use that occasionally? Uh, not longer wait. I cannot sharpen my own chainsaw, so I'm not even going to try. But uh, down here, I got all my assortments. We got machine screws, clevis pins, hairpin clips, hammer cotter pins, larger ones. This is all the electrical terminals, O-rings, metric, standard, uh, all the brass fittings here. Um, I think this is more brass fittings. Yep. Come over here. This is my miscellaneous box. It's got a little bit of everything in it. Um, these are all my grease fittings. Um... Uh, you guys kind of get the point. Go on down through there. I even got one for zip ties all the way down there at the bottom. Uh, I started off with a company called Barnes, which is the blue one. I ended up, they, uh, the salesman retired, and I ended up going with Lawson. I don't really have any complaints with either. They, uh, the Barnes guy, the salesman, was a little bit more responsive about getting back to me. But uh, both of them had good products. Uh, I, I've been happy with both of them over the years. Uh, down here at the end, I keep all my grinders here. This little thing here is where all my abrasives are. That could use a little bit of organization, but uh, all that stuff's in there. These are some random socket sets. If I ever get my service truck set up one day, that's the stuff I grab. That's the stuff I grab to take out on a job if I got a breakdown. So it's quick and easy, it's right there. And all my tools I'll keep in the shop or either Mac or Snap on good stuff. I don't like taking those out in the field. So I keep those there handy. I can grab them run they're also 12 point which my other stuff is not 12 points so uh, that's kind of the purpose behind that they're williams i actually like the williams they're, they're pretty good so this is my mac toolbox i actually bought this in college had it for about 20 years um uh, mac socket sets i'm gonna go all the way through this we got pliers screwdrivers electricals you guys kind of get the point on that i got some specialty stuff there on the end these are my extra screwdrivers are used these are the majority of the allen wrenches i use um, but this little work area set up, it took me several years to kind of get this the way it is. It really, really works nice. There's enough area for two people in there to work. Uh, it, it maximizes my floor space. Uh, I've been really pleased, really pleased with the way that's worked out. This is my cobalt toolbox. I actually bought this in college from Lowe's. I'll tell you what, I have to be honest with you guys. This thing has almost held up well, held up better than that Mac toolbox has. I've been extremely pleased with this thing for no more than I paid for it 20 years ago. Uh, it's been a great little toolbox, but uh, standard wrenches, metric wrenches, uh, miscellaneous wrenches, and then I got miscellaneous testing equipment, uh, pry bars and torque wrenches, uh, inch to inch and an eighth, or inch and a quarter, three, or a half inch hammers, uh, three quarter, air tools, yeah. You get the point. It's a toolbox. Um, have no complaints about the cobalt toolbox. It's been it's been good to me. So on the end of it, got all my C clamps and magnetic trays. I got a couple. Uh, I believe those are 50 ton jacks. I uh, bought those at an auction. Uh, we've used them a few times. There's another 20 tonner. There's another 20 tonner back there. This is where I keep the sledgehammer. Uh, I know that's not a sledgehammer, but you know what? If you need to beat on something, it's something you got around. It works. This here is uh, <laughs> Captain Clemens actually got a video on this channel from way back in the day. It's a homemade tire cheetah. And actually I put an air solenoid on it and put a valve right here. And if you hit this, shoves that open, blows air in there. And uh, it actually works really well. You can also screw different barrels on it and use it for a golf ball cannon or a potato cannon or multiple other things you probably shouldn't be using it for. But uh, we mostly use it for a tire cheetah. It works great. These are all my cheater pipes and pry bars and some tire tools. I kind of keep them all tucked away right in there. 
There's the one inch impact for taking off uh, tires on the semi, three quarter inch impact for the heavy lifting. The walt grease gun stays right there and there's a couple sockets out floating around somewhere but that's where all the tire uh, sockets stay at. Down below, got the abrasive 14 inch cutoff wheel. I got an air powered porta power. This is an actual tire porta power kit. This is the winch for the C85 that I never put on. Other porta power random stuff. And then this is just a collection of miscellaneous. There's screws for trailer floors, tire patches, drill, drill bits, uh, taps, magnetic things, helicals, uh, flappers, wires. There's bits for the um, mag drill. That's for the air system in the shop. Miscellaneous brass. I, I got this pretty well organized. You can kind of see what's going on there. We turn the corner here and this is all the pullers. This is a Mac puller set, a bar puller set, a couple three jaw puller sets, some miscellaneous stuff here. Kind of got that hung up on the wall. I used to have it thrown in the bottom of one of these trays and it's just hard to see what you got. You just never know, you just never know what you got. So I, I put it up around the wall. Don't use that stuff a whole lot, but if I can see it hanging on the wall and I need it, I can go get it. So it works out pretty well. On top of here, this is where I keep all my teeth for the different tracos and my spare fire extinguisher. I try to keep that over here. But these are all for the 120 here. These are all the keepers for the 120. I do have some new keepers down there for the new Volvo 140. Uh, and I got some teeth and some keepers down here in the bottom for the 304. Keep that all organized here. There's a couple spare parts for the 304. That's a lower roller and an upper roller. Some miscellaneous pins. I think those are for a bucket on the 304. I need to write on those what they are. Never can remember. Miscellaneous lights and there's some, this here is full of uh, porta power fittings and stuff, uh, miscellaneous stuff in there. And then I got a uh, bolt bin. I go from quarter inch to three quarter and I go from M6 to, uh, uh, let me see here, I can't even remember, M6 to uh, M12 in metric. Uh, Lawson is, takes care of all this now. Uh, there's times I don't have what I need, but the majority of the time I got everything I need and it works out it works out really well one thing you guys got to remember is i'm almost 27 minutes from the nearest part store or hardware store so I, sometimes i feel like i'm inventorying too much stuff around here but if it saves me a trip to town it's worth having here so i don't get carried away with inventory but i do make sure i got plenty on hand this here is uh, my fireproof cabinet this was actually come out of the georgia dome in atlanta i was able to snag onto this and we keep uh, brake clean penetrating oil paint um yeah it's a fireproof cabinet that's alcohol for the rc car and uh keep everything everything in there this is also where i put all my youtube stickers that chipper guy mlh jason burning dinosaurs junkyard tom miss elite earthworks msl logging uh nuts uh shooters logger wade so yeah i also keep a fire extinguisher close to it just in case if you guys didn't know they got holes right here that you're supposed to uh, put the fire extinguisher in, close the cabinet doors and that goes inside, but we're getting off subject. Anyways, keep some welding supplies up there on top for stick welding. This shelf here, I don't know where I got this thing, but it should be in the scrap metal pile. Uh, top shelf, some miscellaneous filters and a few random parts. This shelf here is tire slime and antifreeze. This shelf here is parts that need to be installed. These are parts for the 120, that's for the cedar. This is for the grater. I threw these up here as I need to place for them. Uh, we've got a chainsaw down there and the bottom shelf is just kind of a catch-all of some stuff that I've debated whether I should get rid of or not, but I keep around because I just don't know. Harbor Freight's parse washer, uh, it's been good. Uh, it's low on, it needs to be cleaned out is, is the problem. I, I still do use it, but I don't use it properly. I need to get it cleaned out and get new solvent in it. I used to use it quite a bit. I don't use it as much as I do. If I got a big engine job or a big teardown job, um, I'll take the time to clean it out, but right now it's just not high on the priority list. This is a roll around cart that is my miscellaneous catch-all. If it don't belong in the bolt bin, or if I think I may need it one day, it gets thrown on top of there. Yes, it has saved me a few times. I'm not gonna deny that fact. And then this cart here is the one I actually use in the shop for different projects and stuff. This is also another snag from the uh, Georgia Dome in Atlanta. That was a demo job we were on, so we were able to grab a few things and uh, pull them out of there. Uh, here's my jack stands. If you guys seen the video on building the uh, jack stand rack, that has that has worked really well. Getting those up off the floor, 
of, we seem to use them more because we see them and we know they're there. So that, that has paid dividends in multiple facets. That is my TV. I do have cable TV out here. I need to get a smart TV so I can watch some of you guys on YouTube. Um, but I got TV, DVR, and I, uh, the main reason I got it out here is I like watching NASCAR. So if I'm in the shop working, I can turn some NASCAR on and watch that. If I'm not watching NASCAR, I need to get a smart TV so I can watch some, uh, watch some YouTube. This is the nastiest part of the shop. This is the oil. Um, that barrel there is where all the filters go so they can get properly recycled. This is where all the used oil goes and I usually either sell it or give it away to a local guy that uses it for heat. I do not burn it around here. I looked at putting in an oil burner in. It's just not economical farming. So I provide it to people who do and, and it works out great. Uh, I just got a little rack up there for final. So this here is another area that I recently just got rearranged. This is my miscellaneous metal rack for fab work. Uh, I actually picked this up and the same guy I picked up the four inch pump from, uh, he was going to throw it away, used it for irrigation pipe. I shortened her up and it's been working pretty good for me. These are random blocks I got for uh, cribbing or chalking. And these are my five gallon oil drums, uh, hydraulic oil and gear oil. It's probably not the best place to be storing those right next to the metal shavings, but uh, I'll revisit that. That's where I got them at. Got them at for now. But this area has been working very well since I've got it rearranged and set up. I do have a couple tripods that I can use on my metal bandsaw. This is, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, 101 inch saw. Uh, this was another find from the Georgia Dome I got picked up. Um, it's a dry saw, but it works really well for what I do and it's on wheels so I can roll it out, cut what I need to, roll it back. I really don't have any complaints over it. It, it works pretty good. Uh, if I was sawing more often than what I am, I'd want something different, but for what I do, it, it, it works. It works very well. See, this is how I knew it was working when it was in the Georgia Dome. Still got the sticker on it. That's my old welder. Uh, Captain Kleeman actually bought that from me. He may even come pick it up later this evening. It's a Miller Legend. It, it was a good welder. Uh, just the few occasions when we needed to gouge, it wasn't quite big enough, uh, but it has a, a 220 generator on it. I think he's gonna take that and use it for his uh, project up there on the uh, tugboat. So it'll work out good for that. It, it runs on propane, which is really nice. You don't have to worry about the carburetor being gummed up or anything goofy like that. You can just, uh, just fire it up and go, and it, and it always seems to always seem to fire off. So, uh, this is another this is a random shop fan. It don't get used a whole lot now. We got air conditioning, but uh, you guys seen in the video we we're working on the Mac and drying the frame. It still does get used. It's worth keeping around here. There's another freebie from the Georgia Dome, so I'll keep it around. Uh, we got this little hook here. Shovel, broom, floor cleaning supplies stay there. This area looks like an absolute disaster. Uh, I got spare fuel hoses back in there. I got spare hydraulic hoses. Uh, there's electric tarp row. There's some welding leads in there, some jumper cables and an extension cord, just some air hose. Uh, this, this pile has saved me more than once. So I keep it around until the hook starts overflowing and I go through and purge some stuff out. But it, it's, it's kind of one of those catch-alls of some random hoses and cords. It does come in handy. This particular hose drill here is the only half inch hose drill I got in the shop. Shop is strategically placed there for two reasons. One, it is long enough to reach the entire shop. And two, it's right by the door. So if I got a truck outside with a flat tire or something, I can get 50 feet from the door and uh, go on out. So it, uh, it, works, it works very well for that. This door here is my big shop door. It is 12 by 14. The purpose of that was I wanted to be able to get a 13.6 semi in here, so that's why I got a 14 foot door. And 12 is wide enough for everything except for the big dozer. I kind of got to come in here at a little bit of an angle, it's 12 foot six, but I can still get through the door. And I really don't have room for a 14 foot door, so that uh, that that works out, works out well. Uh, got an air hose there, air hose there, and if anybody cares, I missed one over there. That makes up the four air hoses in the shop, not counting the half winch one. Now this door here, is eight by eight. This is where I would have done something a little bit different. I would have made this an eight by 10 door. Um, the reason for that is, is I can't get a lot of the, like the old 110 tractor and a tractor with a rollover bar. I'm trying to think uh, the 304, it will not fit through that door. So I have to come through the big door and then slide over here. I do wish that 
was a 10 foot door and making it 10 foot is not as easy as it sounds because there is a lean to out there. So I have to raise that whole roof. So at this point in life, guess what guys, we're just gonna get by. Uh, that's one thing I definitely would have changed for sure. We've kind of come full circle. That's where the third door used to be. It is now uh, closed off and goes to the other shop. And that there used to be a door right there that goes in the house that's uh, now a little vestibule inside. So that works out pretty well. But uh, yeah, it, it, the shop has, has treated me well over the years for sure. The one last feature that's absolutely awesome in this shop is the overhead crane. I know a lot of you guys have uh, noticed it over the years. And I, you guys are gonna laugh at me whenever I say this. I have literally got $500 in this crane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the crane over to my office area so we can actually stand up there and look at it and I'll give you guys a rundown of the crane. All right guys, here it is up close and personal. I built this entire thing by myself. The, uh, so all the steel eye beams out of this thing uh, come from a building that got tore down. The main runners up there, uh, the trolley ones, they come out of a kiln over Dubois County. This beam here come out of a, a building that collapsed in Counton. So all the steel I was able to scavenge from demo jobs I did years and years ago. And I had some help. I had a buddy that was a, an engineer. I kind of told him what I was gonna do. And he kind of gave me some guidelines to go by. Uh, he wouldn't put a stamp of approval on this thing because he intended to draw it out. But he says, if you follow these guidelines, you're probably going to be fine. I keep a real close eye on this thing. I inspect it pretty regularly, especially if we're going to do a heavy lift with it. Fortunately, for the 15 years I've used it, we've not had any issues with it. It is uh, operated flawlessly, uh, but I don't take that for granted. I do, I do treat it with respect. I guess is the best way to put it. So, uh, the beams up there, they're 10 inch. I don't know the weight on them, I don't remember. They go 40 feet across the shop and they are supported twice in the middle by hangers with steel posts in the wall. Uh, same overall night side. This beam here is a 15 inch beam, it goes the full length, 44 feet. Then it's got a 10 inch beam laid on top of it for lateral force back and forth. Out there in the middle, it's got a Harbor Freight a little bit Harbor Freight winch with a couple guide wheels. I actually welded a half inch key stock around the drum and then I tensioned the cable that goes from this wall all the way over to that wall and it's got a turnbuckle on it and it's basically a slip clutch. So there's no way that thing can grab hard enough to roll this beam over if it's got a heavy load on it. That was a big concern of mine. Uh, about once a year, I'll have to get up there and put about a turn or two on that turnbuckle, tighten her up a little bit and by golly, she's good to go again. But that works really well because it keeps you from getting yourself in trouble. It's got a way to spin out without pulling too hard and biting, which I think is very, very crucial and very, very important. Now, the rest of the hoist is 100% air. I actually did some trading with a guy. This is out of a engine room on a tugboat, which is why it's air. It's a two-ton Yale hoist. It is air operated this way and it's air operated up and down, which is why we got the half-inch air hose running to it. Uh, basically what I did is this is quarter inch cable. It's got washers, zip tie, electric cord goes to the, uh, I'm sorry, the electric cord actually comes up from the controller and goes back to control the winch. And then this provides air to the hoist for all the functions there. I have never messed with any of this since I built it. Uh, I've never tensioned this cable. I've never had a zip tie break. I've never had a, a rub in the air hose. I've never had any issues with any of that system. And guys, this thing has got used a bunch. Um, it's got used a bunch. Now, on the ends here, these are basically four foot beams, uh, two foot on this side, two foot on this side. And these are just uh, two ton push trolleys from Harbor Freight. I think I paid maybe 50 bucks a piece from them. I'm not for sure if I didn't get a deal on them because I ended up buying four. And then the same thing here. This is the power cord going out to that. Uh, which is on this plug-in here, and that plug-in is controlled by that breaker switch down below. And I got a little piece of steel right here. Look, you can see, I don't know if you can see how far that's wore down in there over the years. So if that thing's cut down in there. But that basically keeps all those, all those pushed back. I mean, the washers are showing some wear, but they're nowhere near, near being wore through. 
But uh, four dollies on there. I do have some cross braces on there to keep everything squared up. I got a couple extra dollies on here because back in the day I only had a half ton uh, electric hoist and I used to have a two ton chain pull and then, then I came across that one and uh, it works a lot better. But uh, it's nothing, it's nothing fancy. It's nothing to ride home about. I can actually reach my entire shop within two feet of the walls and I see here the heaviest things I've whipped with it. We pulled the engine and uh, torque converter assembly out of the D7F all in one shot. And we lifted a septic tank. We've, we've, we've used it to full capacity more than once. I have, whenever I first built it, I lifted four tons with it in the center of the shop. And nothing cricked, nothing broke, nothing happened. We actually took that four ton and kind of went around the shop and kept a real close eye on everything. No issues from that day, that day forward. It's been two tonner, two tonner, or no more than two ton. That was kind of our test period. It will hold four ton. I have no intentions of holding four ton. So that works out pretty well. Uh, I do have the steel eye beams that sit in the wall and those steel eye beams come down and sit right on top of that block and, they're, and there's them blocks are poured full all the way down to the footer. I know that's not the ideal way to do that. They probably should be out here where they can be exposed and be inspected, but I didn't want to give up the floor space and I didn't know any better back in the day. I did uh, have the siding whenever we took the metal off and resided the outside. I was able to get in there and actually see all four of them and inspect them. Everything looks good, so I don't have a whole lot of concerns there, but that has been, like I said, I don't think I've got $500 on that and 75 of them have been paint. Uh, it's just stuff I've scavenged over the, over the years and over time. And oh my goodness, if anybody's ever rolled an A-frame around the shop, you know how much you'd appreciate an overhead crane where you can actually get around and see where you're going. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been awesome. I'm sure you guys see me use it in the videos. It's, uh, it's very handy. The controls are very simple, very basic. I gotta turn the air on here, you're not gonna see. So, oh, remember my safeguarding? Let me let that compressor shut off. All right guys, so here's the basic crane controls. This is east and west. It's west. East. North. South. Up. Pretty basic. Pretty simple. Now, one thing I will say, if you guys heard me say at the beginning of this video, the whole shop was designed around this. I did measure the wall height. My wall height is 17 foot nine. And whenever that hook is all the way up on that crane, I can get a 13 six truck underneath it. Why do you say 13 six? Well, that's the legal height for a semi going down the road. So if I brought a semi in here that was 13 six tall, I wanted that crane to be able to clear it. And it does do that. That's, uh, I think the height of a shop is one thing that is overlooked. A lot of times when building, because uh, you build it, then you get a cab tractor, or you want to put a car lift in, or you want to put a crane in, or you want to put an A-frame gantry in there. And you end up with a lot of restrictions on height. That's one thing that's not taken into consideration as much as it probably should be if you're going to use the facility as a shop. So a couple other quick things I'll point out in closing. Uh, the doors, these garage doors were especially modified. As you can see, I will a section of track in right here. This door will go up the wall and then come across the ceiling and the crane will go underneath it. So it'll go up and clear. This door here just goes straight up the wall. So I have no interference with the crane whatsoever with the doors, the lights, uh, anything in here. The, the crane can make full travel in any direction, any way, shape or form, and uh, does not get interfered with anything. The lights that I have in here, I have, uh, there's 27 of them. There's three runs of nine. Uh, these actually come out of a facility or they were a quality control office I tore down for GE. I took them out of there and uh, I used them with uh, T8s or T12s for a while then T8s and finally a couple years ago I went all LED in the old fixtures. I don't know how much money I saved there but it was it was Buku's even uh, retrofitting them. Uh, they've served me well. The reach on a switch to their own. All the uh, wood in here Everything is 7 16 OSB. The bottom four foot is painted green. The rest is painted white to reflect light. It does need to be clean. It's a little bit dirty. I went back and forth with metal on this when I built it. The OSB was about 
even after I painted, it was about a third of the price of doing the whole inside of this thing in metal. And I just felt with the OSB, it gave me more options to hang stuff on the wall and uh, do different things. Uh, I, I don't think I would change it. There's been a few times I've debated whether I should have done metal on the bottom and then OSB the rest of the way up. But guys, I've been, I've been really happy with my OSB choice. Uh, I, can't, uh, I can't regret that. I do have blown-in insulation in the ceiling. Uh, I got about 18 to 20 inches of blown-in up there. At one time, I had blown-in in the walls. I did not do a very good job. I have since come back and uh, put uh, open cell foam in there. I got about six inches of open cell foam. I consider this to be extremely energy efficient. I'll give you, a, if any of you guys are HVAC guys, I've got a two and a half ton unit that keeps this thing cooled in the summertime. And I'm 44 by 40 by, let's just call it 18 feet, which I think specs out to about three and a half ton unit. So uh, yeah, it's pretty energy efficient. That goes back to uh, pole barn versus a uh, regular building. If you're gonna retrofit a pole barn, to be an efficient building, it's almost cheaper just to build a building and go that route. So don't get uh, don't get fooled by that initial initial price. But uh, I believe that's uh, I believe that's pretty much it. I guess the last two things we do have a basketball goal that's for the kids. Well, it's for the kids now. It was for the adults back in the day. It does get used from time to time. And I do have a 48 inch exhaust fan that's uh, got a louver grill on the outside. That uh, that actually came out of a house we tore down. It was an old attic fan. It uh, it works good for what. When we need it to don't use it often but uh, if you're in here welding or got a truck running or painting we flip that booger on and it does uh does a good job the heated floor does a nice job of recovering in the uh winter time and the ac uh does a nice job of recovering in the summertime after we get it on so guys that's it i've drug this on long enough hope you guys enjoyed the tour if you got any questions about anything i've done or seen something that maybe i could do different or better be sure to comment down below and let me know love hearing from you guys and we're going to call this one a wrap. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, and the important part, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. That's greatly appreciated. Catch you on the next one, guys.